by the end of the Italian campaign, nearly 100,000 Canadian soldiers had seen service in Italy. When Allied troops went ashore in Normandy, the Canadians carried their share of the assault. The drive inland was tough and subject to repeated German counterattacks. In a great pincer movement during August 1944, Canadians, British and Americans effectively sealed off and cut down a formidable German force deployed in the Falaise area. When the fighting ceased around Falaise, the battle had turned into a major German military disaster. The Canadians alone took more than 12,000 German prisoners. At least eight enemy divisions were destroyed, and 16 more suffered disastrous losses. At the end of the war, General Eisenhower lauded Canadian troops for their valor and determination. Responding to the United Nations appeal for troops in 1950, many Canadian soldiers volunteered for duty among the barren Korean hills. Fighting side by side with American and other UN soldiers against the North Korean communists, the Canadians brought a matter-of-fact military professionalism to their work, which was a model for all. These men knew their jobs. They remembered the reputation their fathers had made at the Somme and Vimy Ridge. They remembered Dieppe and Ortona and the Falaise Pocket. And before they were finished in Korea, the communists remembered them. The first Commonwealth Division provided recreational facilities such as they were. For the hard-fighting Canadians, the chance to relax over a glass of ale was always welcome. The Canadian Army has maintained a brigade group in West Germany since 1951 as part of Canada's NATO obligation. Headquarters is near Zost, handy to terrain well suited for the constant training activities carried on by the formation. Battalions from regular regiments are rotated periodically for service in Germany. These men stand next to the American 7th Army, on guard at the outer perimeter of free Western Europe, ready for any emergency. When the United Nations was confronted with the Suez Crisis in the fall of 1956, the Canadian Army was called upon to provide personnel and materiel to assist in policing the area. Serving under the UN flag, Canadian units helped bring about a successful prisoner exchange between Egyptian and Israeli forces. In the troubled Middle East, Canadian soldiers still represent the interests of peace. The fighting history of the Canadian Army is a proud one, and nowhere is it more revered than at the Royal Military College at Kingston, Ontario, where future officers are trained. At a modern army camp near London, Ontario, the oldest regiment in the Canadian Regular Army makes its headquarters. The Royal Canadian Regiment has been a part of the Regular Army since 1883 and carries battle honors from the Northwest Rebellion of 1885. Today, the regiment continues in a state of combat readiness, providing highly trained men for duty anywhere Canada requires them. Already, members of the regiment have had experience as international policemen and as UN observers. The unit has also served with NATO forces in Germany. These fellows comprise a special group of soldiers called pioneers, similar to our army engineers. The axe, the apron and the beard reflect time-honored tradition when the men parade. Every Canadian soldier learns the basic tools and techniques of his profession early in his career. Famous for their precision on the parade ground, members of the Royal Canadian Regiment 
polish their drill under the guidance of experts. The sergeant major's pacing stick marks the step and his experienced hand times the slow march. The same serious attention which these men bring to their close order drill is carried over into all phases of their work. Most members of the RCR are qualified parachutists who maintain their proficiency with frequent jumps. There is only one member of the regiment whose combat effectiveness might leave something to be desired. But he makes every jump anyway. Canadian regiments display their colors in a solemn and moving ceremony. At Edmonton, the 2nd Battalion of the famous Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry troops the color. Sir, girls formed up as ordered, 431 other ranks on parade. Girls reported present. Sir. Brigadier Hamilton Galt, founder of the Princess Patricia's in 1914, was this year's guest of honor. When Brigadier Galt first organized the regiment for World War I service, he spent a personal fortune training and equipping his men. General Salute, present on. The most junior officer in the unit receives the color from the regimental sergeant major. The ceremony is derived from the age-old battle practice of rallying around the flag. The color is displayed so that all might be able to know it well and recognize it on the battlefield. Escort! Play the color! Freeze With slow reverence, the regimental color is paraded between the ranks of the Patricias. Patricias wear their honors proudly. Among their most prized regimental decorations is a United States Presidential Unit Citation awarded to the 2nd Battalion for its gallant fight at Kapyong, Korea in 1951. Since the end of World War II, the Canadian Army has maintained a mobile striking force specially trained for continental Arctic defense. In early post-war operations, such as Sweetbriar, United States forces participated in joint maneuvers with these Canadian snowfighters. Such forces may someday be needed to protect our Arctic radar warning centers from enemy attack over the North Pole. Defense of this due line is one of the many cooperative responsibilities of American and Canadian troops. At Gagetown, New Brunswick, typical permanent facilities are designed to accommodate all the needs of a busy army. At Camp Gagetown, regular army and militia units